please join in singing number 547, All Creatures of Our God and King, 547. our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Almighty King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. 
Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord.
gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It's as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he, yield, he wheels the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, that when it's sown in the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it's sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. And with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. As Jesus uses the analogy of the little seed and the mustard plant, the thoughts of some of his listeners must have gone back to the words that they knew well of the prophet Ezekiel, the words that God spoke to the prophet during the time of their exile. It's not over, you'll be reestablished. This isn't the end. I haven't abandoned you. And what did we hear in the first reading? I'll take one of the shoots from the top of the cedar and I'll plant it. And then it will become this large tree and the birds of the air will come. Jesus speaks the same in terms of the mustard seed. Seemingly nothing and insignificant. A potential of being of benefit to countless. Brothers and sisters, from that example of the prophet and from this simple example of Jesus today, we have a very profound and important lesson. First, we have to be willing to start small. We know it in many practical aspects of life. People who have been successful in the business world don't start by opening up something that's beyond their capacity. If they do, they find themselves in bankruptcy or closed. They start small, they build, they receive assistance from others in terms of advice and skills and hope, and they consistently make the effort. And then there's setbacks, but they learn from those setbacks. Setbacks that they can pause, reevaluate, and then continue, not turn around and run away. We have to start small. That's the first point. The second, it takes time. Anything instant does not have the same value as that which takes time. We see it in our society today. There are many couples who talk about, you know, we think about all the years that we sacrificed and we went without. And we did it joyfully because we were saving and hoping for one day having our own home or having this or, or providing this for our family. <coughs> today's world, well, why wait? Just put it on a credit card. Or hurry up. It's got to be instant. Get it now. And then you get it, and before you know it, somebody's got bigger and better, and now you don't like what you have, but you'll be in debt for it forever. Or the instant food. You can hurry up and shove in the microwave, press a couple of buttons. Five minutes later, you're eating it. Ten minutes later, you're out the door. What's happened to family meals and conversations and the ability to pause? Whereas Jesus told us often through examples in the gospel, a meal is about more than shoving food in your face. We're fed by more than just what we put in our mouths. Many families are hungry. Many children are starving because they're given food, that's fine, but then rushed off to the next thing. So we start small, it takes time, then the third has great potential. Ezekiel prophesied the growth of the chosen people of God. Jesus speaks of the ramifications of the growing of the kingdom. We can make that personal. And this week I invite us to do that. Whether we are looking to improve something in our life, in our relationship with God, 
in our way of living our faith authentically. We don't have to get dramatic. We have to start small. We have to embrace the little opportunities. I love it when so many of you tell me that you started by once a week, not letting a week go by where you don't come in and sit in here for 10 minutes. Talk about how now if there's a day I don't come here, I miss it. And when I come, I usually find out I better check my watch because the time goes by so fast and I'm rushing to the next thing. But it didn't begin by saying, beginning tomorrow I'm doing this, 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 and this. No, that's for ourselves to be able to come up with a, a great list. Francis de Sales said, pray as you can, not as you can't. So we start small. And this week, can we have the humility to ask ourselves the question, what are some little things that need to be added to the picture? That maybe I need to pull out what is non-essential so that I can give greater priority to what's essential. So we start small. But that's not just true of the positive things we're pulling in. What about when we are burdened by habitual sin or a weakness? Again, we can become so discouraged. Well, I'll wage war and then I lose while I'm a loser. Again, step by step, I avoided this temptation. I'm changing this little thing that makes me susceptible. I'm no longer carrying it around, I'm handing it to the Lord in the sacrament of penance. Ridding ourselves of habitual sin begins with efforts. Small. Growing in grace begins with taking efforts. Small. It takes time. Persevering. Not giving up. Refocusing. And even restarting. Anyone who has dared to do these things and who knows their wisdom can attest to the last. There is great potential. May we bring home this message, not generic, not for our husband, our wife, our kids, or anybody else, each one of us. What we do not only then affects us, but it has a ripple effect. We just had the second of our Curious About Catholicism nights. I'm truly inspired by the people who come, who know there's so much ahead that they need to rearrange in their life as they're embracing faith. They speak about it with enthusiasm, even though they know it's going to be a challenge. They come because someone planted a seed. Someone's been praying for a while. It starts small. It takes time. But there is tremendous potential for us individually, as a parish, and for so many the Lord is leading here to discover or rediscover what it means to be part of the body of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we bring our needs to God. For our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our Pastor, and for all in church ministry, to be graced with vision and strength as they shepherd God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students and teachers in these days of summer break and for all on vacation, may they be safe, refreshed, and see the hand of the Creator in all that surrounds us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders to make peace and the protection of the most vulnerable a priority, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bill Lake, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, and for all our departed loved ones, may they enjoy the fullness of life and light in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we carry in our hearts here today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, and all this we ask with confident faith through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing number 408, These Alone Are Enough, 408. sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. O 
God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you send to us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who've died in your mercy, and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And we offer a sign of peace. Number 345, Seed, Scattered, and Sown. Thank you. 
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The old saying is a picture's worth a thousand words. There's lots of words as we captured recent celebrations for our kids, confirmation, first communion, and then five of our kids uh, who were baptized and confirmed and made their first communion on Pentecost. It has been a very joyful season, so it's captured in beautiful pictures. There's also a full page. A few years ago, one of our parishioners, uh, Colleen, uh, graduated from college and then took a year to serve with Christ in the city. After that, she did it again. And after that, she recently was offered a position and now works with that organization. Uh, Graham, one of our service, uh, also experienced Christ in the city. Opportunities for young people to press the pause button and to give back and to go deeper and to look more closely. Uh, so that kind of recap is on a page in the bulletin along with the story of one of our current college students, uh, Marcus. Marcus, since the time he was in grammar school, consistently through high school and, and through these past two years of college, has been so faithful in his willingness to serve the parish, his uh, willingness at the altar. I always know exactly when he's on the way. And as he's done that for the parish, so too he thought it's time to take an opportunity to really listen, to work. Uh, and in the monastic tradition, one does physical work that allows one's mind and heart to be focused on God. And so he took a leap to do that and is in Gallup, New Mexico. It's a very exciting uh, uh, internship that he's involved in, and all the details of that are in the bulletin. So keep him in prayer every day uh, as he experiences this. And as he said, when he left, uh, he leaves with curiosity as to um, what God's going to be uh, doing in this time. You'll notice other things that are coming up. They're all detailed in the bulletin. For our young adults, 18 to 30-something, ladies, Sienna Sorority is Tuesday night. Guys, Frasati Fraternity is Thursday night. Uh, tomorrow is the RSVP deadline for the ladies, Monday for guys, and the details for that are all in the bulletin as well. So there's a lot more. Be sure to grab it, take a good read. To all of our dads, we wish our very best uh, for a happy Father's Day tomorrow. All the names that were enrolled for the remembrance are here before the altar and have been commemorated and remembered in this Mass today, as in all the Masses tomorrow. And then lastly, over the past few years, we've made various books available, and we've had a couple left here, a couple left there. So we took stock the other day, uh, and whatever we had, we put out on a table that's behind the last pew. Feel free, um, if you're new to the parish and weren't here when those came out, uh, feel free to take whatever, and any free will offering uh, will be gratefully received. And again, I echo my thanks to so many of you who passed on our Pentecost read, who planted a seed, extended an invitation. Uh, last Wednesday night's Curious About Catholicism night was incredible and inspiring. And we're looking forward to the next one coming up in August and then launching what will be our largest RCIA year ever. So thanks, continue the prayers, continue extending the invitations. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Please join in singing number 432, How Great Thou Art. 432.